first and goal. Mahomes flings it. It's there! Hardman! Jackpot! Kansas City! Back-to-back -back champs, the Kansas City Chiefs taking home the Lombardi Trophy in a nail-biting overtime win. The must-see moments from Allegiant Stadium. Viva! Viva! Plus, a one-on-one -on -one interview giving insight into Usher's halftime performance. I have to say, the Super Bowl halftime is probably the most exciting 15 minutes of TV. News 3 has team coverage from all over the Valley as fans celebrate the big game here in Las Vegas. Live from the News 3 studios in Las Vegas, this is the CW News at 10. For the first time in almost 20 years, we have back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions. In a nail-biting finish, the Kansas City Chiefs takes the win from the San Francisco 49ers, and they'll take home the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Celebrations erupting all over Las Vegas, the sports and entertainment capital of the world, as fans react to the big game, the first ever hosted right here off the Strip. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marie Mortera. While some fans are on cloud nine, others will be going home in disappointment. We have team coverage for you tonight. Our Brian Salmon and Jesse Merrick are live from Allegiant Stadium with play by play and fan reaction coming to you live from Jim Snyder, Tiffany Lane and Kalia Patterson. First, let's check in with Brian over at the Death Star. Well, hey, what's going on, Marie? I can say this history was made here at Allegiant Stadium, our first ever Super Bowl. And as you said off the top of the show, it was absolutely epic. We had a rematch with the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. Enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and check out what happened in this game. You know what? The first half, there wasn't a whole lot going on. Not a big offensive explosion at all. 3-0 to zero the Niners when someone finally gets into the end zone. Because of a little bit of trickeration, Jawan Jennings passed to Christian McCaffrey. 21 yards later, McCaffrey scores. 10-0 to zero the, goal. the Niners rub at this point. Fast forward to the third quarter. 10-3 Niners until the Niners make a huge mistake, a muffed punt. The San Francisco 49ers turn the ball over. The Chiefs recover at the 19-yard line. KC is in business. First play after, it's Mahomes. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, 16 yards. The Chiefs are up now, 13-10. All right, Brock Purdy, you know what? He would have the answer, kind of like Allen Iverson. 12 plays, 75 yards, ending one of Jawan Jennings, 10-yard reception. San Fran back up 16 to 13. Now after the Chiefs tie the game at 16, the Niners go seven plays, 40 yards, ending with a 53-yard field goal by Jake Moody, putting San Fran back up 19 to 16, leaving Mahomes 153 in regulation to write his legacy. He takes his team down 64 yards, gets a nice little short field goal. Game tied at 19. We're going to extras. Overtime, NOT. The Niners get the ball first. They go down. They get themselves a field goal. And Mahomes, he does what great ones do. 13 plays, 75 yards. He gets the Super Bowl winning touchdown. Mahomes to McCole Hartman. 25 to 22. The Chiefs go back to back. Mahomes, your MVP. What a game. Battle into the adversity that we battled through this year. And um, guys, staying with the process, keeping believing. Um, you just you, you never know how it's going to happen, and to be able to go play three three great teams to get to this game and play another great team and um, win all those games, uh, it was a true uh, road in the playoffs, and uh, we were able to come through and be Super Bowl champs. That was a microcosm of our season. I said it, um, and everybody came together, and we were able to get the win. So when it comes to sports, you have the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Now with more from the agony of defeat side of things. Jesse Merrick, he's in here in the Death Star somewhere. Jesse, what you got? Hey, Brian, you took the words right out of my mouth, man. There's two sides of the coin in this one, obviously for the 49ers, trying to wrap their heads around what exactly went wrong in this game. You could start on third down. They were just three for 12 on the date. Lots of missed opportunities for these guys in this game. The plays were there to be had. Also look back to the first drive in that game. They were really cooking. Christian McCaffrey fumbles it down in the red zone and that was kind of a story of things to come down the rest of the way. Brock Purdy also told us after the game as well that they were really struggling with the man coverage that the Chiefs were throwing their way. Obviously speaks to Agnolo, the defensive coordinator for the Chiefs, is known for scheming it up as best as anyone else out there in the league. They did just that tonight and now again the Niners left trying to pick up the pieces and kind of wrap their head around what just happened here tonight in Las Vegas. I mean, a lot of guys are quiet, and a lot of guys are still quiet right now. Um, not a lot has been said. Um, 
just hurts. You know, we have the team obviously to do it, to win the whole thing and come up short like that. You know, the way things have been the last couple of years here, um, everyone wanted it so bad. So um, I think we're still trying to sort of gather, you know, our, our thoughts and, and everything right now. But there's nothing different to say. I mean, I don't care how you lose when you lose Super Bowls, especially ones you think you can pull off. Um, it hurts. We've gotten pretty damn close, but uh, we haven't pulled it off and we're hurting right now. But doesn't take away from how proud of our guys I am. Yeah, it hurts. Uh, hurts deep, you know. It's something that you dream about as a kid. You, you've worked so hard for all year and come up short. Um, I think you just have to go through all the emotions as they come, but, you know, each day just chip away at getting back to getting back to normal. I don't know how long it's going to take. It's still fresh and it still sucks. Yeah, definitely a tough one for them to wrap their heads around, guys, especially for Coach Shanahan. Now three straight times in the Super Bowl that he's given up 10 or more point leads, double-digit leads blown. So obviously a tough one for him to swallow. We'll see that rebound for now, though, Marie. Let's get it back to you in the studio. Heartbreaking is the first word that comes to mind for that team. All right, Jesse, thank you for that. Well, win or lose, the elite, uh, excitement over at Allegiant Stadium was intense. Our Jim Snyder is there now. And, Jim, you are with the fans. What's the mood like now? I'll tell you, here's where it all happened, Marie. It's hard to believe that just a couple hours ago, this place was filled with uh, 60 plus thousand screaming fans. The stage is still down there where the Lombardi Trophy was handed out. And let's hear it for the confetti cleaners. They're going to have a long night ahead as uh, Brad zooms in on the field. You can still see all of the Kansas City confetti on the field. And once that long overtime game was over, Kansas City Chiefs were not leaving their seats. Let's take you. To that moment, we were down there when the confetti was still flying, and I talked to a lot of these fans. They say they never gave up on their team, even when they were down and went into overtime, and they just kept believing that Patrick Mahomes would pull it off, and all of them had high praise, both for their team and a lot of love for our city. Play together as such a team. It's one for all and all for one every day and they come together in the, the biggest moments and make it count. It was crazy. It was, gotta love an overtime Super Bowl, right? Yes, yeah, oh yeah, 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 I love that. And I'm glad they changed the rules so both teams got to touch the ball. It was so much fun, there's so much energy. It was just overwhelming. Um, we're just glad that we were here. I feel awesome about this, first Super Bowl. What about the game being in Las Vegas? What did you think about how? That was a blast. It was yeah, well that, worth it. The city did great. Yeah, the city a, did it. They had a plan. Beautiful. The stadium's amazing. I mean, they did everything right. You know, so people are laughing, thinking maybe we should do it every year here. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we'll come back when it's here again. Oh yeah. heck yeah! Oh, 100%. All right, hundred percent, man. Congratulations. All right, and I. I think it's an unwritten rule at this point that uh, when you're covering this Super Bowl, you have to show this as well. Here's Travis Kelsey embracing with Taylor Swift after the game. And it was funny to watch because this moment was happening behind the stage where the actual ceremony was still going on. And you could just tell that uh, most camera lenses in the stadium were pointing this, this direction to see uh, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey hugging a few kisses there in celebration after the game. So that's the story from down here at Allegiant with the winning fans. I know you're going to hear also from uh, the other side of things, but for now, I'm Jim Snyder reporting from Allegiant Stadium. And Tiffany Lane, you've been talking with folks who are having a little bit of a, a longer night tonight. Yeah, well, you know what? I can't deny there was a lot of disappointment. We did see some tears out here, but I don't think anyone can deny that the Niners put up a good fight. So, uh, you know, their fans, we spoke to them and they say they're proud of their team and they think they're going to make it back next year. Yeah, so, um, you know, here's what we heard from these fans. I mean, some were a little more cheerful. They said, you know what, the defense showed up. You know, the offense could have showed up a little more. But Patrick Mahomes, he's tough to beat. I mean, who can deny that? So um, 
They, they came out here. They said they do not regret coming to this game the first time in Las Vegas. Just how amazing it was to be here in Allegiant Stadium for the first ever Super Bowl here at the stadium. No regrets. We did speak with uh, one couple. They actually spent $20,000. They sold their car to be able to afford tickets. Those were Niners fans, unfortunately. But even they said they don't have any regret regrets. Uh, the husband will be driving his wife to work for a while until they can figure out what to do. But he said if they knew what was going to happen, what the outcome would be, they still wouldn't take it back because of just it was a it was a close game. I mean, at some point they thought the Niners were going to clinch that win. Unfortunately, at the end, that wasn't the case. Uh, but again, disappointment today, but also everybody knew the Niners showed up. And so they're still very, very proud of their team. And again, like I mentioned, I, I don't think they have any doubts. They're saying, you know what, they're going to make it to the next big game next year. So obviously way too early to be predicting that one, but a lot of, of hopeful fans here tonight. But for now, reporting live from Legion Stadium, I'm Tiffany Lane for the CW. Back to you. Wow, a lot of sacrifice there. Selling a car just to be able to witness history there at Allegiant Stadium. And, you know, ultimately that experience experience is priceless. Tiffany, thank you for that. Well, for many, the Super Bowl is also about the food, of course, the fan gear and the fun of tailgating. Experiencing all of it in Las Vegas makes this one even more special. Our Judge Acosta learned how. It's a first for Allegiant Stadium. Let's go Niners! Let's go Niners! Thousands of NFL fans all decked out in red showing up to support their favorite team, the San Francisco 49ers. Do it for the Bay! The Kansas City Chiefs. Let's go Chiefs! Or for some first timers. I am hoping to see Taylor, but I'm, I'm just here. It's been a bucket list item for us, and you know, we just, about two weeks ago, we found out we were coming and we're just so excited. While some fans may be new to football, others, many of which have traveled from all over the world, say they've waited decades for a day like Super Bowl 58. I've been waiting 43 years to go to the Super Bowl, and I got to go with my. Go Niners! I've been preparing myself for 30 years for today. The fact that I'm here is insane. My mom bought me and my brother tickets. That's the only reason we're here because she knows what big super fans we are. Other fans say they are keeping years of tradition strong. We started this about uh, 6.30, 7 o'clock this morning. Just completely reminded. We had it a different way. We looked at it. His mom didn't like how it was done, so we had to change it up. So it's something that uh, took a little bit to buy, but it's well worth it. Many buying NFL merchandise for their friends, family, and the future generation. We have the clothes, we have the hat, helmet, it's so cool, t-shirts, everything is super cool. I bought a sweatshirt for myself, but for my brother and son, and we would come, uh, I bought them each a shirt and a program. As many others purchase mementos to keep pieces of Super Bowl 58 with them, others are making shrines helping fuel thousands of hungry fans at Allegiant Stadium. I make all with a big barbecue sauce from Citrus Snyder, which we do really well in Kansas City. For the 49ers, we have the Scallop Valley Company Citrus Quinoa, which I think works really well uh, for the healthy athlete. And if there's one thing for certain, many fans say they're in agreement is no matter who wins the Lombardi Trophy, their Las Vegas experience is priceless. It's in the glam and everything's bigger than life here already and the Super Bowl is more on top of that. Being here is just an opportunity of a lifetime. In Las Vegas, Georgia Costa. Our Super